McGill is honored today to celebrate the achievements of one of its own, Dr. Neville Poy. And I'd ask Professor Angela Campbell to present our distinguished alumnus so that he may have conferred upon him the highest recognition that is within the power of this university to grant. And I ask Dr. Poy to join me at center stage for the presentation of the honorary degree. Mr. Chancellor Emeritus, it is my great pleasure to present to you Dr. Neville Poy. Dr. Neville Poy is deeply connected to McGill University, starting with his time as a student and growing to include roles as a visiting professor, committed volunteer, and passionate ambassador for his alma mater. As a child, Neville Poy moved to Canada with his family from their native Hong Kong. After completing his studies at McGill, Dr. Poy embarked on a long career in the field of plastic surgery. He specialized in treating and researching severe burns at Scarborough General Hospital's pioneering burn unit, long the only unit of its kind in Canada, and there he earned a reputation for treating his patients with unparalleled compassion and kindness. He has said, and I quote, in dealing with plastic surgery, whether it be cosmetic or reconstructive or severe trauma, you must empathize. You have to feel what the patient is feeling. That will guide how to rehabilitate the patient. Rehabilitation starts at the time of meeting with the patient, and your words are very important. If they have faith in you, they'll develop a strength that will ride them through. Dr. Poy distinguished himself both in his professional practice as well as in giving back to the community, his peers, and to the next generation of medical practitioners. He served as the president of the Ontario Medical Association Plastic Surgery Section and was active in the Scarborough General Hospital Medical Society and the Health Research and Development Council of Ontario. He has held several leadership positions with the Scarborough General Hospital and has given his time to advancing the work of the North American Lipolysis Society, the Canada-China Child Health Foundation, and the Canadian Association for Accreditation of Ambulatory Surgery Facilities. En plus d'enseigner à titre de professeur invité, le Dr. Poy est demeuré engagé auprès de McGill en siégeant au conseil consultif médical du doyen de la Faculté de médecine et des sciences de la santé et en dirigeant les efforts philanthropiques de la Faculté de médecine et des sciences de la santé. And medicine is not the only field in which Dr. Poy has excelled. In 1995, he retired from his surgical practice, having felt he had contributed everything he could to our hospital and the plastic surgery community and the community of his city. He thus renewed his focus on photography, a lifelong passion of his since receiving his very first camera at the age of 11. He has since held many exhibitions of his photographs, including at galleries at the universities of Victoria and Toronto, and served as honorary chairman for photographic and art exhibitions on China, a 2002 initiative sponsored by the Federation of Chinese Canadians. Dr. Poi has been recognized with many awards and honors, including the Queen's Grant of Arms, lifetime appointment to the Queen's York Rangers, and the status of, the office, status of Officer of the Order of Canada and Officer of the Order of St. John. Mr. Chancellor Emeritus, I present to you Neville Poi so that you may confer upon him the degree of Doctor of Science, Honoris Causa. It's my pleasure to invite now Dr. Neville Poy, who's just received his fourth, yes, his fourth degree from McGill University, and I will ask him to deliver the convocation address. Dr. Poy. Chancellor Emeritus. Mian, Madame Maurice Bertrand, Chair of the Board of Governors, Co-Acting Provost Angela Campbell, proud families and guests, and most of all, members of the graduating class 
of 2022. I thank you, McGill, my alma mater, for the honorary degree of Doctor of Science you have given, given me this day, and I shall cherish this to perpetuity. I was born in Hong Kong in 1935. World War II brought me to Canada in 1942 by diplomatic exchanges after a period of incarceration in Japanese-occupied Hong Kong. My formative years in my new home, Ottawa, were wonderful experiences of true friendship, bonding, and educational excellence. My first experience with near extinction, death, however, was my delight in playing by myself on the, on the precar very precariously frozen Ottawa River. We just lived above it. And I reveled at the sight of all the air bubbles underneath the thin cracked ice and how I could move those bubbles by jumping up and down to make the water come through the cracks. I realize now that my life was spared only because of my light weight and by divine providence. My early exposure to Canadian news media at age of eight years were twofold. The National Film Board of Canada had me play a role in this portrayal of an imaginary Chinese boy starving in war-torn China who was invited to a Canadian girl's home who wanted to entertain those starving children in her home and have a wonderful meal. The movie was called A Friend for Supper. But by then, I was so well nourished and had to have a lot of shadow makeup to make me look gaunt and starving. Likewise, I was interviewed on radio by the Ottawa Humane Society to tell my story of my pet dog, Snow White, and how I had to let her loose in the streets of embattled Hong Kong because we had no longer any food to feed her. My assimilation into my new Canadian life was a fast and wonderful experience. I had good command of English, winning first prize in annual Ottawa Rotary Club of uh, Public Speaking Contest in grade eight, and also I was elected to the presidency of my grade eight student council. I had always wanted to be a medical doctor to my parents' delight. That became a reality when I was accepted into the only medical school program for which I applied in 1954, and that was to McGill. Subsequently, I interned and did my residency in surgery and plastic surgery at McGill. My surgical practice began as the director of the first burn treatment unit in Canada, which was in Toronto. It encompassed plastic, reconstructive, and aesthetic surgery. Throughout the greater part of my practice and beyond, I supported the need for additional funding of the plastic surgical residents' education, training, research on a national and global basis. I also realized that I could, in addition to my professional life, assume leadership roles in my community. I was appointed to boards of McMichael Collection, the Royal Conservatory of Music, as well as providing full tuition scholarships to the students. My support of youth initiatives was most gratifying in the annual national contest of the top 20 under 20 in Canada. When I presided in the swearing-in ceremonies of new Canadian citizens, I was always moved to see their joy and happiness, expressing their gratitude and pride of becoming citizens of Canada. Prior to, concurrent with, and following my retirement from my medical professional life, I had an avocation for photographic art starting at the 11 years of age, which was mentioned. It played a major role in my quest for photographic imaging of nature and the beautiful world in which we live. Vivian, my spouse, and I have traveled globally. That opened up the vast vistas of people, places, and nature's beautiful palette through my eyes and my photographic lenses. We have recently co-authored a coffee table book called Precious Moments, depicting fauna and flora in our gardens in Muskoka and Toronto. Over the years, I have had numerous images publicized in magazines, participated in many fine photographic art exhib exhibitions and PowerPoint presentations. Retrospectively, I have lived a virtual, adventurous, and fulfilling and wonderful life of over 60 years with my darling wife, Vivian, who joins me on the platform today. I'm so happy to be honored with my honorary doctor of science degree. 
It serves as my special 87th birthday gift on October 29th this week. Thank you, Miguel. <laughs> Thank you, Miguel, and thank you, my fellow Miguelians, for making this a very special day for all of us. Thank you. <laughs>